In 2011, the federal government built double walls across Friendship Park, the historic meeting place at the western end of the U.S.-Mexico border. Limited, weekend-only access to federal property was afforded the public in the United States. The past decade has seen the gradual but constant rolling back of public access, the de facto sunsetting of Friendship Park. At first, 25 people were allowed inside federal property. In 2016, however, this number was reduced to 10, resulting in long waits for family reunions. By February 2020, San Diego Border Patrol had eliminated public access altogether, and to this day, families arrive at Friendship Park, many having traveled long distances in each country, only to find themselves waving to their loved ones from a distance of over 100 feet. Sorry. At first, after 2011, people enjoyed regular visits to the Binational Friendship Garden of native plants. Eventually, however, weekend visits to the garden were banned, and work parties increasingly disallowed. In January 2020, San Diego Border Patrol agents bulldozed the garden, scraping it entirely of over 10 years of growth. Public events like this annual springtime Pandango Fronterizo continued after 2011. And for many years, people wishing to participate in the border church were not counted against the Sunday limit. Gradually, restrictions were added, and by February 2020, the park was closed to the border church, and no access was afforded for public events. All of this happened prior to the spring 2020 onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, U.S. officials plan to build two 30-foot border walls across the face of Friendship Park. They insist that when this construction is completed, they will work closely with stakeholders to identify opportunities to, write, to provide the public with access. But a return to the status quo ante does not sound like an improvement to those who know and love Friendship Park. Rather, it sounds like a return to the current standing practice, which is no public access at all. The coming days and weeks will tell whether what we are witnessing is the sunsetting of Friendship Park. To learn more, visit www.friendshipart.org. In 2011, thanks. I hope that was a helpful explainer of what we've witnessed across the last 10 years uh, from the date of November 2011 when public access was first restored. I uh, wanted to say welcome again. Uh, thanks for joining. I'm John Fanistel with the Friends of Friendship Park. Uh, and uh, we have many other members of our Friendship Park Steering Committee here in the room. Uh, I see Dan Watman and Alexi DeBrom and Robert Bivar and others who are our core team members. Uh, Nancy Muro is with us and I'm sure I'm missing, but thanks everybody for joining. And I recognize a lot of familiar faces. Thank you all for your solidarity. What I uh, thought we would try to accomplish tonight, and this is a, a monthly meeting where we try to bring people up to date on the latest. And um, uh, we try to keep it to an hour. So we're gonna try to close at eight o'clock, uh, but I wanna encourage you to feel free to ask questions along the way or to use the chat room, of course. Uh, uh, please uh, you know, engage as much as you'd, you'd like to. Uh, but we do have a lot to cover because it's been a very busy <laughs> couple of weeks. Um, and most uh, specifically, I wanna accomplish the following. I want to kind of bring you up to date on our latest conversations with uh, Customs and Border Protection. Uh, and then I want to uh, talk about our plans moving forward, uh, which include a uh, what we're calling a stakeholder summit and also uh, continuing uh, presence at the park through our action team. Um, I do wanna be sure to at least get to talk a little bit about our 51st anniversary, which is just coming up 10 days away or 12 days away, it's Saturday, August 20th. And uh, we've got some friendly visitors, welcome. So that's kind of my agenda is to give you the latest update on Customs and Border Protection, to uh, talk about upcoming actions, uh, both uh, the stakeholder summit and creating some presence and getting people out at Friendship Park. Uh, talking about the anniversary uh, and 
minimum we can accomplish that. I'll then open it up for questions and there may be other topics that we'll choose to address. But is that, a, is that an okay agenda? Can I see a thumbs up from people if you're okay with that approach? And if you see you have particular questions or other topics that you'd like to see addressed, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, the meeting with Sandy, with US Border Patrol was um, interesting. Uh, we've been meeting with US Border Patrol across many, many years, and it's a very challenging uh, environment, uh, in part because the Border Patrol is constantly changing leadership. And so we've had the experience of always feeling like we're always starting over. There's always new leadership. And as explained in that video, our experience is that new leadership arrives, new restrictions, old restrictions are left in place and new restrictions are piled on top. This was a somewhat different meeting in that it's the first time that uh, uh, um, people from Washington DC flew in to join us. This was last Wednesday, a week ago, Wednesday, July 27th, I think was the date. And to familiarize you with a little bit with the bureaucracy that we're engaged with, uh, US Border Patrol uh, has uh, four within it, four directorates. Uh, human relations, strategic planning, law enforcement, and what's called project management. And it's their project management directorate that oversees the construction of walls or the infrastructure management on the border. And uh, there's a local project manager here in San Diego who works out of Liberty Station. Uh, and we had been in touch with him across the years. But for this meeting, the executive director of the program management office directorate flew in from Washington DC with some of his staff. Uh, so the prog program management office director uh, reports up to the chief of US Border Patrol, a guy named Raul Ortiz. Raul Ortiz reports up to the head of Customs and Border Protection, Commissioner CBP, whose name is Magnus, Chris Magnus. And CBP reports up the chain to Department of Homeland Security, which is Alejandro Mayorkas. Alejandro Mayorkas is a cabinet member, therefore reports directly to the president. So that's the chain of command that we've been uh, contending with all these years, but we've chewed higher up that chain of command than we ever had before because some folks, folks flew out from Washington, D.C. At that meeting, we requested a, a four, 120 day pause uh, on construction. And we're told, we presented letters that, to them and that we were gonna copy all the way up the chain of command, all the way, including to the president, which we did. And we were told that they would respond uh, within, uh, uh, by the end of the following week. And in fact, it was on Thursday of this last week that they did announce um, that they are, uh, uh, what they called a temporary pause. Uh, this temporary pause has not been defined, uh, but we are forging ahead with some uh, plans uh, of our own. And I thought I might, um, I'd invite anybody else who was at that meeting who might wanna say a word about it. Uh, uh, Dan Wattman, uh, I don't know if you wanna chime in at this point, but I'll also share with you um, uh, the report out that I gave on, uh, on KPBS uh, today at noon. Dan, did you wanna add anything about that? Uh, I think you covered it for the most part. I mean, at the meeting itself, it, uh, it wasn't a very um, hopeful meeting. It didn't, it, it seemed a little bit like the normal response of uh, we're taking your concerns into account, but we're building the wall anyway. That's basically what they said. Um, but um, <clears throat> I, they, they also said they would bring it back to Washington, D.C., and it appears they actually did. Um, and uh, I think probably the media pressure, the uh, press conference immediately afterwards, uh, that I, I could, I'm guessing that that had something to do with um, the success of getting a pause. Yeah, and I would say that we did present along with um, our letter, a letter from 15 members of Congress, uh, elected officials at every level of government, all the way up to and including our senators, uh, Diane Feinstein and Alex Padilla. Um, uh, 160 faith leaders had signed on to a letter, about 80 different community-based organizations. So 
we were able to demonstrate a, a wide uh, and, and far-reaching uh, you know, concern for the future of Friendship Park. And we're very grateful to all of you who played a part in that. And so that too also, you know, it was a different conversation because we were uh, in a conversation not just representing ourselves. Our Friends of Friendship Park Coalition has always aspired to be a coalition and, and to represent uh, the constituents and concerns of very many people. And we feel like we're accomplishing that at new levels in this go round. And, and again, very much appreciate the, the input. Just in case you didn't, this is a summary of my conversation today with KPBS. I'll share it just so uh, you can hear a kind of an interview format about this uh, latest developments. Plans to construct new border barriers at Friendship Park remain on pause today. Last week, U.S. Customs and Border Protection put a temporary halt on a project to modernize and increase the height of the fence at the border between Imperial Beach and Playas de Tijuana. And the CBP now pledges to allow public access to the border park at least two days a month after construction is completed. The pause in construction came after a wave of criticism from the public and from politicians when the new border wall project was announced. Advocates for Friendship Park are hoping for at least a four-month delay for community conversations to take place. Joining me is Reverend John Fanestel, convener of the Friends of Friendship Park. Reverend Fanestel, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Did the CBP's announcement of a pause in construction come as a surprise, or were you expecting it? We had met with uh, CBP, Customs and Border Protection, and U.S. Border Patrol officials last Wednesday and we're hopeful, uh, but this is somewhat unprecedented that uh, they've paused construction with the promise to engage with community stakeholders. So it's not a common practice of theirs uh, when it comes to building border wall. And I'd say we were pleasantly surprised uh, that they've agreed to take this step. After the CBP announced plans to replace the fence at Friendship Park with a higher, sturdier wall, there was surprise and a sense of outrage from many people. Why did it trigger that response? Friendship Park is a unique location and the notion that border walls should be erected there to make it look like any other stretch of border is uh, uh, an offense to the peoples of California's. Uh, this is California's uh, border park. It's also the original uh, boundary marker between the United States and Mexico. The monument at Friendship Park was put in place at the end of the U.S.-Mexico War. So it's a historic location of unique cultural, environmental, uh, and historical significance. What does Friendship Park mean to people with family and friends on both sides of the border? Friendship Park is a symbol of the border that those of us who live along the border know and love. Uh, a place grounded in friendship. We're, we're friends, remember, with the people of Mexico, not enemies. And Friendship Park has always uh, symbolized uh, this uh, place of binational encounter uh, for family, uh, for friends, for communities, for art, art culture, music, uh, food, and on and on, all of the things that uh, those of us who uh, know the border region love about it. Now, the Biden administration says a new barrier is needed for safety reasons. Do you think the present fence needs to be replaced? There are some uh, what are called anti-climb panels, which are sit atop the primary uh, barrier. The primary barrier is that border wall that sits right on the international boundary and extends all the way out into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, most folks in San Diego will have seen images of that wall. And some of the anti-climb panels, the top panels on that primary wall have corroded in the salt water and clearly they're patched now and clearly need replacing. But we inquired, there are no other structural challenges to the walls presently at Friendship Park. There's no, in other words, no need to replace the walls presently there for health and safety. There's some uh, uh, patching and repairing of spots along it that need to be done, but the, the notion that 30 foot walls needed to be uh, put in place because of uh, concerns for health and safety, uh, factually is just not true. The CVP says after new wall construction, the park will reopen a few days a month. Was that part of their original plan? Uh, we don't know what their original plans were, but uh, I'll, I'll put that in the same category of non-starter. Uh, you know, two days a month would represent a 75% reduction in public access from the very minimum access which has ever been afforded at Friendship Park. Uh, now, remember, this is a park that was wide open to the public on both sides for the vast majority of its history. It's only in the last 15 years that access has been restricted at all in the United States. So the notion that 
access should be continually restricted and restricted and restricted and now reduced to two days a month is is a uh, really a slap in the face that proposal uh, for the rich opportunity that Friendship Park uh, represents. How long is this construction pause supposed to last? They have not specified, uh, as you uh, mentioned in your lead, we proposed a 120 day pause, which we feel is the minimum necessary to engage in meaningful consultation with local stakeholders. Will you be arranging some of those community discussions with this CBP? We intend to convene a, what we're calling a stakeholder summit in early September. Our uh, relationships at Friendship Park span uh, the border and span uh, all kinds of interests, ecological, historical, uh, engineering, governmental agencies elected. There's a lot of people, in other words, who have a stake in the future of Friendship Park, and we're proposing to convene them and will do so in early September. We're hoping that U.S. Border Patrol officials will join the community stakeholder conversation that we'll be convening. If they propose a, a, another uh, method, another uh, uh, process, uh, we'll gladly participate in that as well. But the Friends of Friendship Park are moving forward with our plans to convene a robust conversation and to develop a, a, a future-looking design uh, that will, of course, create a safe and secure environment in Friendship Park, but that will also take advantage of the wonderful opportunities uh, for cross-border relationship uh, that the park uh, has to offer. I've been speaking with Reverend John Fanistel, convener of the Friends of Friendship Park. And Reverend Fanistel, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. So I'm hoping that uh, gives you a, a kind of an update on the current status of conversation. We have not, they announced the pause, did not specify how long it would be paused and announced that they would make the park available two days a month upon completion. Uh, in our meetings last week, they indicated that the construction project, which has to be contracted by September 30th, funds, and somebody has their sound on perhaps, am I hearing some background noise or is it me on my end? But if you're able to mute, appreciate that. Um, the uh, funds for this project were dispersed in fiscal year 2018 or allocated by fiscal year 2018 by Congress, which means they have to be dispersed by September 30th of this year. The project doesn't have to be complete, but the funds have to be dispersed to contractors. Um, the construction project, we're told, would be carry on uh, through the spring of next year, March, April, we were suggested might be expected timeframes for completion of the project. Um, and uh, until that time, they said no access. So that means that Friendship Park will remain closed at least until the spring of next year, which will take it past three full years since access of any kind was afforded here in the United States. So as I mentioned in that interview, and we're, we're really kind of moving on a couple of different fronts. One is to convene, we're just moving forward with the process of convening what we're calling a stakeholder summit or a stakeholder conversation. And I wanna share with you a little bit about that and invite you to, to share your ideas in that regard uh, in the following way. Uh, just to illustrate the breadth and depth of interest and concern at the meeting last uh, week, we shared uh, with them what we called, we did not rehearse this list, but we handed it out, what we called an initial list of stakeholders. Here's an initial list, just a starter list of stakeholders uh, for Friendship Park. Uh, and you'll recognize some names. I'm just gonna scroll through them quick, quickly rather than pretend to uh, read it all. <clears throat> but the point is that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of people with vested interests in the future of Friendship Park. And we wanna make sure that a process of community consultation, in fact, includes the people who know and care about the park. Uh, what I have done is with this document is it is available for comment and anybody who has the link can comment on it. And so I'm gonna put it in the chat room right now. I'll then uh, send this link around as well afterward. Um, but I, I wanted to invite any of you who may want to uh, you know, collaborate in generating or amplifying this list of stakeholders to please do so. Um, so here in the chat room is the link to that document. And if you'd care to click through now or click through later, if you'd like to add uh, your organization or uh, another organization that you know of or somebody that you think should be included, uh, please add them to that stakeholder list. We'll, we'll also be, um, uh, let's see, we'll also be um, circulating uh, soon, we hope by the end of the week, uh, a form to nominate people 
for participation in what we're calling the stakeholder summit. Uh, we have a design team that's just beginning to put that process into motion. But the idea is that we'll take nominations from people who would be interested to become uh, conversation partners uh, with us and hopefully with Customs and Border Protection if they will join this process in uh, elaborating a, a more reasonable and responsive uh, design proposal for uh, you know, the project at Fenchurch Park. Uh, meanwhile, we'll wait to hear whether they want to, as we expect they might do, that they might propose their own process. And they may or may not accept our invitation, but uh, we're hoping that since we are able to convene this breadth and depth of community concern, and that's the stated reason for the pause to consult with community stakeholders. We're hopeful that they'll join the conversation that we'll be convening in September. Um, question, question. Yes, please, Alexi. Um, since we have uh, quite a few people here joining us tonight from different organizations, if these different organizations reached out to Border Patrol and invited them to one of their weekly or monthly meetings, and asked for an update on Friendship Park. Is that something that the organizations can do? And then if they decline, is that something that we would want to know? Because if they want community input and they're declining to accept invitations to let the community know what's happening, we would want to know that they're not really doing what they said they would do by getting information from the community. Yeah, thanks for that suggestion, Alexi. I certainly don't, uh, wouldn't object at all and, and more, more of the merrier. By all means, please contact US Border Patrol. We can generate that contact list if somebody uh, would wanna put San Diego sector US Border Patrol contact information in the chat room, I'd welcome it. They, there is a process that they will have to go through and we, we don't yet know what that process is. Uh, we're hopeful if they accept our invitation to participate in our process, that our process that we're proposing would, in fact, we would in intend to try to canvas and assemble a broad range of concerns. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll leave it to others and to you, Alexi, to, you know, whether it's realistic to expect Border Patrol to go to 120 meetings over the next month. But <clears throat> they certainly could accept an invitation to join our conversation, which would assemble the concerns that span the list that I just shared. So uh, welcome that, thank you for that idea and, and please uh, feel free to, to, to reach out directly to Border Patrol. Um, I do wanna say uh, just a quick word about the principal concerns without getting into the too much detail about the uh, specifics, but we had originally been told that the new 30 foot walls uh, would not include a pedestrian gate. That would have been the complete closure of Friendship Park. Uh, we are now assured that there will be a pedestrian gate in that exterior wall, but we're concerned that some people, including perhaps some of our elected officials or others, may hear, oh, well, they're putting a gate in the exterior wall. What's the big deal? Well, here are a couple of issues. First of all, a gate in a wall is still a wall, and especially if the gate is never opened, which has been the case now for two and a half years and it's been <coughs> years. Uh, second of all, um, the issue of the 30 foot walls is, is very, very real. And I'll, thanks to some friends, uh, Alexandra uh, and her team who have created a little video I'm gonna share with you. We want you to try to appreciate the impact that the creation of 30 foot walls would have at Friendship Park. Um, these 30 foot walls, we know what they look like because to the east of Friendship Park, you can see them. And they, if they were driven straight across uh, Monument Mesa, in our view, they would completely obliterate the experience of the park on both the US and the Mexican side. Um, so just to say that the notion that, well, as long as they put a gate in the wall, no big deal is a, a very mistaken notion. And we need all, uh, in, in conversations, we need to push back against that very strongly. Uh, and then here, uh, let's see if I can get to it. Thank you, Alexandra, who sent, just sent me this link. Alexandra, I don't know if you want to say anything about this video before I show it. Um, sure. So when John asked us to do the 3D kind of animation of what the wall will look like, we started putting it together without actually knowing how impactful it would be. And Melina, who couldn't be on the call tonight, she's a, the 3D designer who, who did this. She 
she said to us, she was like, I actually started crying when I saw it because it was just so shocking, um, such an impact and how Border Patrol kind of puts it out that they're just making some changes on the wall. Um, it's, it's really not changes, it's, it's a whole new thing. Thank you. And here's a, just a very quick uh, representation of what 30 foot walls at Friendship Park might uh, look like. Sorry, I gotta get that moved out of the way. And let's get the sound going. Sorry. There we go. Let me start over so you can get the effect. So thanks for um, getting my basketball highlights there. Thanks I for, uh, what's that? No, I think it's a really excellent the way it portrays how people can see each other from one side and the other. And through all of the different uh, articles that I've seen internationally about the pause, the emphasis is on the 30 foot wall the height but we really need to start emphasizing that these walls will prevent completely prevent the visibility from one side to the other from one family member seeing the other family member from the other side yeah yeah thank you alexi that's and that as that video illustrated and uh, alexandra and melina did a great job if, even you know if you're directly aligned of those posts you can sort of see through them but even at a very slight angle, it literally appears like a solid wall. So people climbing up onto Monument Mesa or approaching the park from any angle at all would simply perceive it to be a solid wall without even understanding that there's anything like a public space there at all. So that's a critical element uh, to push back on. I encourage you, I'm just gonna put the, the Facebook link right here in the chat. If you wanna go to that, uh, wanna go to that Facebook link and uh, like it, share it, please do if you're a Facebook user. Uh, uh, there's a shorter version also up on Instagram, and I don't know if that's ready, Alexandra, if it is, perhaps you can put that in the chat room as well. 
but please spread the word. This video begins to capture uh, that primary concern, as Alexi just mentioned, of the perception, the impact, the visibility, the visual experience of the park on both sides. On the Mexican side, I have a short video, but I'm not, I'll share it later if, if you'd like to see it, but it's a short video that illustrates Many of you have been on the, well, how many of you have been on the Mexican side at Friendship Park? I'm guessing a good number of you. You remember being out on what they call El Mirador, which is the platform on top of the bathrooms, and then that platform that it sort of extends out overlooking the beach. From that platform right now, you people on the Mexican side can see all the way to downtown San Diego and out to Point Loma, and on a clear day, all the way up the Southern California coast. Uh, they can also see down onto the beach right there on the U.S. side. These 30 foot walls would completely obstruct that view. So people on the Mexican side would no longer be able to see downtown San Diego or Point Loma or the California coastline. And they'd no longer be able to see many families, uh, speaking of visibility, will go down on the beach and wave farewell to their uh, loved ones up on the Mirador. And that line of sight would be completely eliminated by these walls as well. So 30 foot walls are a no go uh, from our point of view. And moreover, uh, just to underline the point, and then I'll open it up for questions, uh, but to underline the point, the Biden administration paused construction on several projects along the border, its first day in office. And the, it's a rationale for resuming some projects was replacing walls where health and safety was a concern. And we've been told by Border Patrol that that is the rationale for this project. But in our meeting with them, we asked about those anti-climb panels, the panels on top of the primary wall, which are rusting and corroded. And we were told that that was the health and safety concern. And I, we pressed them and asked, I asked them, is there any other health and safety concerns pertaining to the structure of the primary wall or the secondary wall? Is there you know, a, th a danger based on the construction of the walls themselves? And they said, no. We don't know, but it, we know it's tens of millions of dollars. We don't know exactly how much is left for them to spend on this project, but they're tens of millions of dollars when really the only health and safety concern of record down there is replacing these anti-climb panels on the primary wall. So the idea that you need to put in 30 foot walls to address health and safety concerns is really uh, illogical. And you know, if they wanna spend $30 million on replacing some anti-climb panels, I, I you know, I guess it'd be a tremendous waste of money, but at least it wouldn't destroy the park, right? So uh, we'd also like to know that number because we'd love to be able to show what we could do. Our, you know, our team could do designers. We have architects, landscape architects, designers, and experts in this area who would do a wonderful job with, if they were given $30 million to improve, you know, the usability of the park and, uh, and create, you know, creative solutions to, uh, you know, issues of access and safety and all the rest. So uh, thanks for pushing back hard. If you hear of it from elected officials, from media, from just people, oh, aren't they putting a gate in it? Isn't that gonna solve the problem? The answer to that is no. A gate, if they succeed in putting two 30 foot walls up, it will forever change uh, the face of Friendship Park. I'm gonna stop there just for a quick second to see if there are questions at anybody. Uh, and then yes, we're gonna do the 51st anniversary. Thank you, Robert, for putting that in the chat room. Uh, let me surface if there are any questions and then I'll have Robert say a word about that 51st anniversary. Any questions about what we've covered so far, which is this current back and forth uh, with United States Border Patrol? Rosemary has a question. Yes, please. Oops, you're a uh, silence, Rosemary, can you unmute? And I see Anne with a hand up as well. If they were concerned about health and safety, have they not heard of the serious injuries and deaths that have resulted from people coming over the 30 foot high wall and being seriously injured and dying as a result? Thank you for that. Yep. Yeah, we've learned over the years that primary, when they talk about health and safety, they, their primary concern for health and safety is the health and safety of their own agents. Um, so that uh, is the rationale for a lot of decisions uh, along the border. Uh, but yes, thank you for pointing out that, uh, seems rather glaring oversight and hypocrisy. Yeah. And did I see a hand up from Anne and then Beryl also? Yeah. But Anne, did I see a hand up? No, go ahead. And maybe she was on the same point. Beryl, a question from you? You know, I asked last time and I don't think I got the right answer. Who owns this park now? Who? The federal government. Federal government. Okay. 
everything between the walls and in fact a little further out than the walls is US federal property. Okay. So the people of the United States own the property, but it is in the care, uh, it is in management of the US federal government. Okay. The surrounding area to the north barrel is California State Park. Right, yeah. Yeah, but it is that boundary that uh, there's a line, a property line uh, there at the park is uh, is clearly marked as uh, U.S. You know, no trespassing U.S. federal property. So that's where the that's where federal property begins. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Raquel, a question. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for the thoughtful and thorough detail on everything. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm curious about the empty chair installation, if you can speak a little bit more about that. And then also just in general, um, are you all organizing any other sort of creative action <coughs> or interventions to try and get the word out or drum up support? Thank you very much. Those are the next two stops on our agenda. So right on cue, thank you. And I'll have Robert, do you wanna say a word about, since you put it in the chat, Robert, but do you wanna invite people to the Mexican side and then I'll say a word about the US side for the 51st anniversary? Sure, absolutely, John. We'd like to uh, take the opportunity to invite you all to our 51st uh, uh, anniversary concert, which is going to feature uh, two incredible uh, Tijuana bands. One of them uh, you probably uh, heard of a while back as Tijuana No. Uh, they're no longer uh, uh, performing as Tijuana No, even though most of the uh, uh, performers are still part of Tijuana No. They go by a different name. Uh, and also, we're very proud that Javier Batiste will be uh, performing. Uh, those that don't know who Javier Batiste is, he's the uh, Tijuana icon uh, where you could say rock and roll began in Mexico, particularly here in or uh, across the border in Tijuana. And also very uh, important to note, uh, Javier Batiste uh, at one point was uh, Carlos Santana's tutor on, on uh, the guitar. That's where... Uh, Carlos Santana uh, begun his uh, his performing and, and his mastering of uh, the awesome guitar that he plays. So it's going to be a treat. And uh, Javier does perform uh, both English and uh, Spanish. Uh, we invite you, uh, come join us. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we love about Javier is that he loves to play to put a smile on people's face. And that's what Friendship Park is all about, friendship, to make people smile. What so, time? What time is it going to be? Uh, the uh, concert is going to begin. Uh, actually, the uh, the whole performance is going to begin at one o'clock. Um, Tijuana No will uh, begin about three o'clock with Carlos, or pardon me, with Javier. Uh, at, uh, we're estimating at four o'clock. But come since the beginning, uh, there's going to be some great uh, festivities starting at one o'clock. So one to five, this is uh, next a week from Saturday, Saturday, August 20th. And as always, we say the, you know, perpetual fiesta on, on the Mexican side, right? But that day in particular, there'll be a huge party. Uh, our, 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 we always say there's a, they're throwing a party on the Mexican side. We want to be able to join in someday. Uh, since we can't join in, and thank you, uh, Raquel, for asking, our, on the U.S. side, we are uh, uh, creating a, what really amounts to a, a, an installation of empty chairs. I put the link in the chat room. The idea is to line the U.S. side of, of Monument Mesa with empty chairs, and those chairs can have your name on it, uh, or you can put the name of some. You buy a chair, or sponsor a chair, and, and put in the when you order the chair, you can put in how you'd like to be recognized. But the chair will say "reserved for uh, John Fanistel," uh, or for another, if you want to purchase a, a photo of a family, we can place that on the chair for you, and then we can deliver that to you afterwards. So just to say there's different ways of, of uh, sponsoring a chair. But our, our goal, we are it is not an open to the public event on the US side. It's, it's really this installation of chairs and we're gonna be capturing, capturing aerial images with drone and other uh, you know, media to capture this, what we hope will be a tremendous contrast, which is this large and vibrant and energetic public concert on the Mexican side and a long rows and rows and rows of empty chairs on the US side to demonstrate that the park is still closed on the US side. So if many of you have already done that. Thank you for doing it. Uh, if you go to the link, you can learn more. And if you have any questions, uh, please just holler. Uh, I see a question from Fernie. 
Hi, uh, my name is uh, Fernando Ferniquiroz. I'm from Yuma, Arizona, with the Arizona California Humanitarian Coalition. Uh, we're at the border every day. And as you know, one of the sections here next to Yuma, you know, our centers, they push to close certain gaps uh, that were left open. And those were left open because um, farmers and the water association said they needed access to the canals, but now they're closing them up. But if you go just two miles down, and as you know, here in Arizona, certain tribal lands, um, they do not put the wall. They are absolutely against, uh, they put a barrier. So what are the reasoning or can we use some of the reasoning they have used to say no to the wall? And they specifically, like Tahoda Odom, and here's a Kokopa tribal land that said, no, you will not build. And it's a stretch about 10 miles. I know they're being applauded right now, or, you know, all these kinds that senators, we're going to complete some of these sections. But if you just go two miles from where they're getting this praise for, it's a 10 mile stretch where there is no wall and there will never be a wall um, on Kokopa tribal land, along with the Tohoda Odom uh, nation over by Nogales and south of Tucson. So I don't know what the reason, you know, if they're, I don't know if we can use some of their wording, some of their logistics and reasoning uh, in terms of, I, I don't know. I just wanted to yeah. bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you very much. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, and this gets back to Beryl's question that until 2006, the land that, that adjacent to the border, the land that we call Friendship Park was actually California state land. And the federal government took that land by eminent domain from the state of California. And so now the federal government is the owner of that property. The federal government was not able to seize by eminent domain some of these native lands, which is, uh, has allowed some native, in some locations, like the ones you're talking about, some native peoples to uh, assert a greater degree of control over construction on their lands. But unfortunately, this land has now entirely been ceded uh, to the federal government and the federal government as I mentioned, by the waiving of laws, has the authority to do whatever they want down there. So it is a, a different environment, but uh, it is an important precedent, as you mentioned, that that there are sites where they've not been able to, to build these walls. Yeah, Dan, you wanted to comment on that? I just wanted to uh, thank you, Fernie, and uh, for bringing that up. And <clears throat> there's also, a, I just wanted to bring up, there's a no border wall coalition um, that includes um, uh, tribal, groups as well as envir environmentalists in general, big big name environmental groups here, the Sierra Club, uh, Defenders of Wildlife and um, with lawyers and, uh, and, and people in Washington DC. And um, they all meet uh, the second Friday of the month by Zoom and, and kind of try to <clears throat> be in solidarity. And, 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 they, and that group supported um, uh, our efforts to try and uh, stop this, these walls from coming into French, uh, Friendship Park. And um, uh, I think we had a, over a hundred uh, organizations that, that signed our organizational sign-on letter and uh, many of them were from that coalition. And so if you haven't gone to that group, that's a good place to um, be in solidarity with, with all the different efforts along the US-Mexico border. And Dan, if people wanted to learn more about that, they could contact you. Would you put your uh, email in the chat? Uh, or contact info in the chat. So if you'd like to follow up with Dan to learn more about that No Border Wall Coalition. And as he mentioned, this is a longstanding coalition who are really on top of some of the questions that you were talking about, Fernando, the different legal angles, uh, the different rights of different kinds of uh, status pertaining to different stretches of the border and so forth, as well as the environmental and other lobbyers, lobbyists in Washington, D.C. who really know federal legislation, how that works. So we're trying to pursue every angle and, and thanks again for trying to think creatively about this. And one um, of the other angles, John, and maybe you can comment on how realistic this is, but I've seen in a couple of editorials uh, in, in relation to the pause, people have said, well, can't President Biden designate yeah. this area as a landmark or, yeah. or some monument? Yeah, in fact, thank you, Alexei, for mentioning that. Uh, and this is another group of ours that's very busy at work and doing fantastic work, a cultural heritage working group that has been exploring for now over a couple of years. Uh, Friendship Park or the monument at Friendship Park is already on the National Register of Historic Places. And uh, we've been exploring for a couple of years what, it would, what would be required to get it elevated, the next stop 
in this national register would be as a national uh, landmark. Uh, but more recently, you're exactly right, Alexi, uh, more recently, it's been brought to our attention that the more direct path, because it is a presidential designation, might be for the surrounding area in the United States to be declared a national monument. And we have a group of people, including some uh, historic preservationists, landscape architects, those kinds of people, who are now beginning to explore that possibility. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if, in fact, I think I might make that the subject of one of these monthly meetings because it is a leading conversation. Um, this would be post, uh, you know, after the current fight and post midterm elections and all the rest, but. If President Biden would designate Friendship Park as a national monument, the, the big news, big, the big game there in my view, and this is a preview of more conversation to come, but the big change there is that when a place is designated a national monument, responsibility for public access to that site is assigned to a federal agency and the president can designate which federal agency that responsibility is assigned to. Most of them are assigned to the interior department because so many national monuments are attached to our national park system and national parks sits within the interior department, if I'm making sense. So if President Biden would designate Friendship Park, the US side of Friendship Park a national monument, he could some, similarly assign responsibility for public access on the US side to another government agency other than US Border Patrol. US Border Patrol would still have law enforcement, you know, uh, responsibility for the surrounding area and immigration and, you know, unauthorized crossings and all the rest. But this could be a, a real winning solution in my mind that, and I think, if, I don't know, uh, uh, sometimes I, I, I think that maybe U.S. Border Patrol might appreciate having somebody else responsible for the management of the public ingress and egress from the space. That's a, a challenge that they've often not risen to, and they say they're short staffed and they don't have the resources to. So why not assign another a governmental agency to curate the visiting experience at Friendship Park? And let border patrol stay in their law enforcement lane, which is what they, you know, the lane they, the only lane they know, really. So that's just a, a preview of future conversations, but stay tuned. Uh, we do have a group working on that. If you'd like to get involved in that, uh, we specifically uh, need people with national uh, experience in, at the federal level uh, with law, uh, uh, historic designation, um, international treaties, because this would implicate uh, the Mexican. Uh, International Boundary and Water Commission is responsible for that monument and on the Mexican side, the counterpart or Mexican side of that, which is called CILA, the Comisión Internacional de Líneas y Aguas. So there's a kind of a binational commission that's responsible for the monument. So if you have interest or expertise in that space, please let us know and I'll introduce you to the others who are in this cultural heritage uh, working group. Um, I do want to make sure before we close that we extend an invitation for you uh, to join actions at the park. And uh, I don't know if Dan, if you want to say a word about this, uh, or if Nancy is still with us, uh, but we do want to extend it. And I do want to get back to Sonia's question too about stakeholder input. But Dan or uh, Nancy, do you want to say a word about uh, upcoming events and activities? Well, I think I think the major one is the anniversary, which Robert already gave an invitation to. So please mark that on your calendar if you're able to come and um, if you're, or, and or support um, with an empty chair. Um, and uh, in general, um, we're um, we want to invite people to come out uh, to a, a training every every Sunday at 11 a.m. I don't know if John, you had that on yeah. your jacket to talk about. Um, yeah, go for it. That was <clears throat> that. That's pretty much it. And if you if you wanted to um, do one of those trainings, just come out any any Sunday at eleven a.m. to Southwest High School, uh, and um, it includes a, um, a a training on on work on going to the park basically and um, creating presence at the park and and everything that we're doing there at the park. I don't know if you want to expand. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I just put that uh, location and uh, chat in that this, every Sunday we are conducting what's called a Marcha de Silencio. Uh, and this 11 a.m. training at Southwest High School is a way for you to get oriented to what uh, Marcha de Silencio is all about and our ongoing campaign to make sure that there's presence each weekend and specifically on Sundays on site at Friendship Park. So uh, Sunday's 11 a.m. front parking lot of Southwest High School. It's right there on Hollister Road as you're on your way to the park. 
and you'll get an orientation. The Marcha de Silencio, uh, I can share a video if we have time, uh, is a, a way of demonstrating that up to the present moment and for the last many years, the voices of local communities have not been heard. So uh, marchers march sometimes with a bandana or a, you know, covering, <laughs> covering over their mouth uh, or a, holding a sign or a, a photo of a family that would like to visit the park. Uh, and so it's a way of uh, symbolically uh, representing that there are many, many people who would use this park if in fact it were open to the public. And we're asking that our voices be heard. Uh, so that Marcha de Silencio uh, does require though that you receive a training and orientation to what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we do it and so forth. Uh, that's Sunday, 11 a.m. at Southwest High School. But, but is that for going to the Mexican side or the U.S. side? U.S. side. Okay. And then uh, Border Church, uh, several of you have participated. Border Church continues to meet on site mm -hmm. every Sunday at Friendship Park. Uh, their gathering is uh, one o'clock on top of Monument Mesa. And for those of you who know the area, you know that sometimes the surrounding area is flooded and you have to hike in. But right now during our dry season, it is accessible to vehicles. So you can drive all the way out to Monument Mesa these days. And you're welcome to uh, come at 11 a.m. for a training session if you want to join the Marcha de Silencio. Or if you want to participate in the Border Church experience, you just drive straight to Monument Mesa at 1 p.m. And there will be people there to to welcome you into that experience. Uh, what else? Thank you for letting us cover. There's a lot going on, but we sure appreciate your interest. I saw a good question about the stakeholder. Uh, this was from Sonia. We do not yet know exactly what process CBP will propose for what they call community, engaging with community uh, stakeholders. So we're waiting on that word but what we've learned over the years is that uh, it's better almost always for us to move forward with our plans uh, rather than uh, try to accommodate and adjust to what federal authorities want to prescribe. So I'm hopeful I'm wrong, but our concern would be that they would prescribe or suggest a very restrictive or limited process of consultation. Uh, and we'll have to assess that when they present it to us. But in the meantime, we are moving forward with this plan I mentioned earlier. We are going to convene a very broad uh, assemblage of stakeholders. We're going to go through a process that will lead to some creative and, and excellent results, we know. And we're hopeful that they'll participate and become part of the process. So we're wanting to make sure that the community leads the process uh, rather than uh, the community just reacting to uh, what Border Patrol you know, puts on the table. Very well, thank you very much for this. We're coming up on eight o'clock, but we have some time. Uh, Dan, you have another question or comment and then we'll open it up for others, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to throw out there really quick. Uh, the training obviously is for people that are at least somewhat local. Um, <clears throat> and if you really wanna be involved and you're not able to come out, then uh, you can always sign up for our volunteer list and we meet on Zoom weekly. Um, and we talk about outreach events, we talk about the anniversary, uh, and other outreach and other events and um, social media and, and other areas where you might be able to fit in if you want to help out, uh, as, as well as um, come to the Mexican side and helping in the garden. Yeah, thank you. And I've just jotted Dan's uh, contact in there again. Nancy uh, is also available for uh, involvement in these on the ground activities. Yes, how are you doing everybody? Thank you for being here to support us and everything we're doing. Um, yes, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with Friendship Park, you've never been there, and then um, you're not sure about the, the, the Marcha de Silencio, I'm gonna put my email and maybe um, maybe we can, uh, you know, uh, we can hit up like a day before or something. So you get more familiar with, with Friendship Park and then you, um, that way you have more more familiar uh, for Marcha de Silencio. And also um, on this coming Thursday, the um, Friendship Park was uh, invited to a webinar um, at three o'clock Pacific time. And um, if you know folks in outside California, please invite them. 
tell them that you know they if to support us and to join us we really want to know that we, we really want to know everybody to know what's going on on Fincher Park I add the link at the chat and also I'm going to add my link in, in case you know you want us invite us to to talk uh our organizations or do presentations thank you Nancy yeah that uh Thursday webinar is called Zooming to the Border for Human Rights, and it's a national network of human rights organizations. And uh, they'll be, we'll be presenting on Friendship Park. You're welcome to register and join that uh, national conversation. Yeah. John, Rosemary. Yeah, please. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's going to be very important as we go along that we get uh, good media coverage for what we're doing. Absolutely. Because the media has generally been very supportive of our efforts and uh, our, you know, our objections to what the, uh, what they want to do, what they want to put up. So, yeah. uh, and I'm thinking like, if we do our own, uh, uh, you know, community input, we're, you know, somehow we're also going to have to participate in whatever the CDP com community, what is it? Yeah, that's uh, right. Comes up with, with or they're just going to say, oh, well, we created this structure and nobody came. And, you that's know, we can say it's a sham, but then they can just go ahead and build the damn wall, you know? That's, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. We'll definitely participate in whatever they uh, prescribe, uh, whatever process, but we want to make sure that the process that we design, which will include the full <laughs> range of input, kind of is on a parallel track. In other words, we're not going to be purely responding to them in, in the constraints that they would establish. We've had tremendous, and I thank you to many of you who are helping spread the word, tremendous media coverage. I mean, it's in The Guardian in the UK and we're really being covered in the LA Times. I would say in terms of uh, this particular phase of our work, I've really, and helped me spread this word as well, I've been really trying to elevate the status and awareness of Friendship Park with the notion that it's not just a San Diego issue. It's just, this is California's border park. Yeah. It's the only park like it on the US-Mexico border and Californians deserve a park on the border that they can be proud of. As I mentioned, we have support all the way up to our uh, senators, but we one uh, elected official we still really need to connect to is Governor Gavin Newsom. And if any in the room have a direct connection to a key staffer at Gavin Newsom's office, I'd love to be in touch with them. They need to be aware, I think they already are, but they need to be brought into this conversation and come alongside Senators Padilla and Feinstein all these members of Congress and all the rest. And Governor Newsom, in my view, should be advocating uh, that, you know, this is, uh, California can do the border, can do a border park right. And we'd like to show uh, the federal government how to do a border park. Um, so please help us elevate this notion that this is a park that's of importance, not just to San Diegans, but to all Californians. And, uh, you know, our next, we don't know yet what our next ask of elected officials will be. But when we ask it, we'll be really trying to, this year, this time around, we had every member, every Democratic member of the San Diego congressional delegation and members of Congress all the way up to the Bay Area about, uh, and some along the border. But we really want to get our entire uh, California congressional delegation signed on to this because every member of Congress in California has a constituent who has visited their family at Friendship Park. I can guarantee yeah, you that because absolutely. we have pe people from every part of the state come down you know, to see their loved ones at this location. So we need to get all our California elected officials uh, caring about Friendship Park, uh, and we need to get uh, you know uh, the governor advocating that you know federal government should let Californians uh, design their border park. We're very capable of it. And, uh, you know, let's not let the the folks in Washington D.C. you know do their cookie cutter design job on Friendship Park. Let's make it something we you know can all be proud of. Very well. Well, this is. Uh, uh, and thanks, yes, again, if you have a direct connection, please, uh, uh, you know, put it, get it to me directly. I'm, I'm at the end of these meetings, I sometimes lose what's in the chat and all the rest, but my address is uh, john at viainternational.org. Uh, and I appreciate any links, ideas. I'm going to, this was recorded tonight. So I am going to send to you all a link of this recording. Feel free to share that with others. We ask that people, the first time they come to one of these general meetings, that they register, and many of you have done that. Uh, but subsequently, we'll try to get the Zoom link out to you. But these meetings are the second Monday of each month at 7 p.m. Pacific, with that, always that 6.30 p.m. orientation, a half hour orientation beforehand, which is more about history and introduction to the park for those who might be less familiar. Uh, Fernie, so you, you have a question for John, yeah. Fernie? Thank, thank you, Fernie, yeah. 
No, just that, you know, you're talking about elected officials because I just got invited to, on Thursday, there on Coronado, Coronado Island, there's a golf tournament for our elected officials. Um, so it'd be good if we um, have some, some something that we can put in their bag. I don't know, but they're going to be all there on Coronado Island um, this Thursday. Um, I'll send you the information. Um, and uh, I know it's all elected officials from Imperial... Uh, I don't know what they call it. I was trying to get the name of the exact tournament, but it's all city council members and, you know, who's who, chief of police and, and all those. So um, it'd that. be good to get those individuals on board. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for links, links, leads, ideas, all the rest. And uh, I'll try to send out a follow-up email with the links that were shared in this conversation. Good. We're coming up at eight o'clock and thanks very much uh, for joining. I have a few more minutes, so I'll stick around for uh, if there are any follow-ups. But for the moment, uh, please do uh, you know sign on, uh, come out Sundays at 11 a.m., uh, sponsor a chair, join the volunteer conversation, and continue to spread the word. Thanks for thanks for your solidarity. Uh, there's a great deal of momentum behind us uh, this time around, and we're entering conversations with U.S. Border Patrol in a very very different position than we have been in the past. So. Uh, thank you all very, very much for your solidarity. And I'm going to call it close at that. I hope you all have a great night. We'll be in touch. You know where to find us. So good right. everybody. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Buenas noches, amigos. Buenas noches, amigo. Gracias, Seth. Gracias. Gracias, Nadia. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, John. Good job. Thanks. Uh, yeah, a lot to cover, but I feel, is that, isn't that great video from uh, Alexandra? Thanks, Ali. I know, I got, a, I got a sneak preview on that. Um, that, was, that was really impressed, it's really great. Yeah. Pues, yeah, y entonces vamos a esparcir la palabra con ese video, ¿verdad? En Facebook, yo creo que están subiendo un, un, una versión corta en Instagram. Cool. Uh, so I think, I don't know if that's already up, but the Facebook post is already out there. So thanks for spreading the word. Well, amigos. Buenas noches. Gracias, Dan. I hope you feel better. Thanks. Cuídate mucho. Gracias. Gracias, Nancy. Gracias, Tanya. Vemos, John. Hasta luego, Robert. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Hasta luego, Guillermo. Buenas noches.